All right, so I got this guest. He's uh, ex-military. He's a full-time YouTuber. His name's Ryan Johnson. Great dude. He's got 250,000 subscribers on his YouTube, and he lost over 80 pounds. He has this amazing mantra that is progress over perfection. It's kind of like your mantra, Corey. What's my mantra? Uh, progress over pathetic? Come on, I wouldn't say pathetic. Imperfect, maybe? Okay, sure, yeah. Pathetic and imperfect. But you know what they say, you are perfect enough in every way, just the way you are. Well, I guess that makes you Mary f***ing Poppins. Welcome everybody to Second Story. I'm Josh Sobalski. He's Corey Leckie. What's going on, Corey? Hey, how's it going, man? Do you have hair yet? Or is that no, 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 okay. still bald. Right. That's why we're there. Still, still want to check. Yeah, that could be a second story later on. Uh, well, joining us today, uh, we've got Ryan Johnson. Ryan is former U.S. military officer. He is currently a full time YouTuber and he's also an online coach. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Uh, glad to be here, guys. I'm looking forward to uh, to talking today. Yeah, me too. It's, uh, you know, I've been a subscriber on YouTube of yours for quite a long time. And I remember the first time I saw you and started to, you know, watch some of your videos and stuff like that. I was like, this guy's tailor made for what we want to do with the podcast. And Corey and I had actually been playing this podcast for like almost two years. It took us a long time to execute, but we finally got here. So uh, happy to have you for sure. Appreciate it. So right off the bat, we are second story. We talked to people who have gone through a major change in their life or a shift that sent them down a different path or onto a new story. So right off the top, let's start with yours. You've got a great one. Yeah, no. So um, if you were to ask me, you know, four or five years ago, if I thought I was going to be here right now, the answer absolutely would be no. Like, um, But essentially, you know, my story is I was in the army. It's something that I always wanted to do ever since the time I was a little kid. I was in the infantry, went to ranger school. Like I got to, I got to live out my dream. After seven years in the army, um, I spent two of those years in Afghanistan. And while I love the army and everything about it, I prioritized my family over that. So got out of the army, started pursuing a job in corporate America. Um, was making good money, but it was I, I was not passionate about it at all. I was in a soul sucking job that meant nothing to me. And through that time, um, after getting out, after about five years, I'd put on 80, 90 pounds maybe of, uh, of weight, gotten really unhealthy. And I was like, you know what? I need to make a change. I need to make a change in my career. I need to make a change in my health. I started initially on a health and wellness journey. Um, and through the process of that, I discovered YouTube and the possibility to create a path and a career for myself where I could follow a passion of something that I have now developed a passion about is this idea of slow and steady weight loss. Um, so started sharing my story on YouTube, was doing it as a side hustle, a way to keep myself accountable. First year and a half, just grinding, sharing my story. And then about a year and a half ago, it took off and I feel like I'm strapped to a rocket. It's a good way to put it. Yeah, you definitely are strapped to a rocket. I remember when I started following you, I think, I don't even think you had a hundred thousand followers uh, on your YouTube and now you are getting close to a quarter million. It's pretty wild to see. It, it is nuts. Every like every time I think I'm doing great, um, it just continues to grow. I'm in the process of having my best month on YouTube. I was just looking back in my first 18 months on YouTube. I was getting maybe, you know, there were days where I was getting no views. But when I, about six months in, I was averaging 40 to 70 views a day. And I remember like in April, I got 200 views in a day. I was like, oh, that's incredible. My first 18 months, I was celebrating 200 views in a day. And now for the last month, I'm averaging about half a million views a day, which is just crazy. You've talked about how each one of those likes, each one of those views, each one of those subscribers, that's that's a human being out there that's being inspired by you. And with kind of like the epidemic, I would say, of weight gain that we've had over the years, um, that's pretty cool. No, I love that. And I think you know, getting into the social media side of things. That's one of the things I always try to remember. The algorithm absolutely is math, right? But the math is driven by a person, right? So understanding that every view, even when it is 20 views a day, it's 20 people that are listening. Really remembering that, I, I, I try to stay grounded in that way. 
Yeah, I, I heard you talk about that in a video. It was maybe a couple of weeks ago where you were you were talking about how at the beginning, you know, you would get 20, 40, 70 views. It was like a good day for you. That's kind of where Corey and I are at. We've had we have a lot of not a lot of success, but we do have more success on TikTok. You know, we'll get close to a thousand views on some of the videos that we post. But Instagram is not our friend right now. We're still trying to figure that out. We're still trying to figure out YouTube. I was just venting my frustration to Corey yesterday about YouTube and some of the stuff <laughs> it does. Um was there a moment where you you felt like I can't do this? Like this just isn't working. I you know, I got to I got to find something else to do. Yeah, so those kind of things absolutely happen and for me it happened um I had been on YouTube for about a year, was at 1200 subscribers, which again by YouTube metrics 1200 subscribers in a year is great. So I don't discount that at all. Um but I had left my six figure position. I was in, again, working corporate America. I told Carrie, um, I was just at that point, I knew I had to leave. Um, I had to leave that job. I took a job working at Publix at a grocery store at the time. The reason that I did that was because unlike the company that I was working for before Publix is a company that really values their customers. And I was like, that's an organization that I want to be a part of. Unfortunately, they don't hire any management from the outside. So I had to start back as a part-time meat cutter, but I was determined to do that. I was like, okay, I'll take the, I'll take a step back to take a step forward to grow with this company. Um, and during that career transition, I, uh, I took probably a month or two off from posting any videos on YouTube. But that changed the trajectory of my life because as I got back into posting videos to YouTube, I was like, in order to exercise my creative muscle, I'm just going to start filming shorts because they're easier to film. Um, I need to put something out there. I have this audience of 1,200 subscribers. I can't go silent. Um, so I started posting the shorts just as a way to stay creative. And then that a few months later in January is when they started to pick up. And that's when I started to see, oh, there's something to this vertical video. And that's when I went all in on vertical video, which kind of propelled the YouTube side of things. Cover your ears, Corey, with vertical video. Corey's, Corey, <laughs> Corey and I grew up in the film industry. So vertical video, ooh, that's good, though. It's uh, it's something we've had to embrace, too. We've, you know, getting into the social media side yesterday you know, posting on Instagram and posting on uh, like YouTube shorts. Yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's hard to get used to keeping it portrait instead of landscape. But um, yeah, I was always curious about that. If there was a moment, because I do feel that sometimes where when you post and you get no traction, you're just like, is this really worth it? Like, is this how I want to spend my time? Because I could do, you know, any number of things that isn't this. But it's, uh, you know, you're an online coach now. I'm curious about that. Is that something that you you do encourage people to do like, is, is that sort of what your jam is with that? When it comes to social media and creating content, I, I think early on in YouTube, I saw that there was potential for me to do something for myself. So I fully invested and believed in, I can build a business around this. I think it's something that I'm passionate about. What I didn't know is what form it would take. So what I encourage to people is because there is going to be that season of grind, you know, you could take off your first month on YouTube, but you could, be at it for three years, find something that you're passionate enough about that you could do it and not get paid. So for me, when I was making videos on my weight loss journey, at a bare minimum, it was a way for me to keep myself accountable in the health and wellness space. So even if I never made a single dime from it, I was passionate enough about it that I could make them for free, which allowed me to do it for long enough, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does Absolutely. make sense. Yeah. People ask me about that with like writing books. I, I mean, I've only released one, but I have another one coming up next year. And they're like, where do you find the time and the energy to actually do that? And I'm like, I just like it. I enjoy doing it. It's fun for me. If I know I'm probably, you know, I'm not making a whole lot of money off of it, but I just, I love it. It's a creative passion. So you cr creativity is really life, I think. No, for sure. Did you have any mentors or any guidance or any people that you followed that, that kind of guided you towards your style? Um, now when it comes to my personal style, I think, um, one of the things that I looked at was, um, the, what I eat in a day videos, for example, that's 80% of my content. I found early on that those videos perform well. And I did that through, I took a course on YouTube on, you know, how to grow on YouTube. And one of the things they recommend is like, you know, search-based content, what kind of um, what kind of videos are out there. So through my research, I found out there's a lot of views of what I eat in a day videos. But when I started looking through there, there was much more search volume than there was 
actual videos produced. So, okay, so that's an opportunity. There's also not a lot of guys doing it. A lot of girls do what I eat in a day video. So there, it was an opportunity for me. Um, so I knew the format already existed. And I think the thing that has helped me stand out is my style is my own. It's like burger places, right? Like people all the time, fitness people will ask me, what do I do to grow my following like you? And I tell them, I was like, do what I eat in a day videos. If it's in the fitness niche, that is a proven format. There's a thousand burger places right now. There's Burger King, there's McDonald's, there's Five Guys, there's In-N-Out. Name, you could not name them all. The reason there are so many burger places is because there's a huge demand. There's a huge demand for that content, but your style is your own. In and out is different than McDonald's, if that makes sense. So I did not come up with the what I eat in a day format. I just kind of put my own spin on it. Yeah, it is. It's very, very clever the way that you do it. It's very authentic, too. You're, uh, you know, you do the what I eat in a day videos, but you also do the here's what I got at Costco and here's what I picked mm -hmm. up at, you know, Publix. We don't have Publix up in Canada, but it's a grocery store chain. So for us, it'd be here's what I got at Loblaws or something like that. But it is very clever the way you do it. And you kind of rational, not rationalize, but you explain to people, this is what I have this for. This is what I leave out when I go eat fast food. And I think that's something that people maybe can't wrap their heads around is like, you can go to a fast food place and eat not terribly. And you sort of show that in the videos. Absolutely. And that's the other thing too, is as far as my consistency goes, I am filming my everyday life because I would live it anyways. So if I just take an extra 10 minutes every day to get the footage, I'm, I'm not going to run out of content in that way either, which plays into the longevity. If I want to do this for the long haul, I need to find a format that I can keep up and sustain. We've uh, talked a lot on this show about sustainable habits and things like that. And obviously you're talking about doing that with your YouTube, but you've also done that with your health journey. So can you talk a bit about creating sustainable habits? A hundred percent. So I don't know if you can see it back there for those listening on the podcast, but that book back there is uh, Atomic Habits. If you've not read it, it's great. It, it, it has shaped a lot of my philosophy around weight loss, but there are so many parallels between my own weight loss journey and what I've done on YouTube and what I'm doing in my business and what I'm going to do in my business. And it's focus on the actions, focus on sustainability, because our ultimate weapon is time. If I just make a small improvement, as minor as it is, is if I keep it up forever, it's going to compound. And I say that with people that I work with as a coach on the online space. Like when I am coaching somebody and they say that they love spicy hot Doritos, I'm like, that's great. We don't have to cut out spicy hot Doritos, but if you eat five bags a week right now, if we reduce that by one, that's 200 calories. But if I could save you 200 calories a week compounded over the rest of your life, that's huge. But sometimes we think we need to make this huge change. And it's like, no, little change. If you just post, if your videos get a little bit better and you just keep posting, eventually they're going to be amazing. Yeah. It's interesting. You use the term compounding. We always think of like compound interest in terms of finances. So if, you know, if I invest this money, I'll get compound interest over the years, but we don't really ever think of that in terms of time. And time is a lot more finite than money is. And it's, it's kind of funny that how, how easily we will sort of spend our time in a way that's kind of wasteful, even worse than money. Like people aren't great with money, but I think people are even worse with time in a lot of cases. No, and I, I, I'm guilty there too. And I think that's one of the things when I talk about habits, whether it be filming content or weight loss, just find, focus on one habit that you can implement and focus on that one until you do it to the point that you do it without even thinking about it. Well, now it's a legitimate habit. Now you can focus on the next thing. If you try to do everything, you're going to end up doing nothing. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Bad Workwear North America. They're a fashion forward workwear brand from Australia with a wide selection of workwear for men and women that is not only durable, functional, but it is modern and stylish as well. With items like slim fit work pants, waterproof hoodies, as well as a robust women's line, you're sure to find something that you'll love. They offer free returns and exchanges on all orders, and listeners of this podcast can head on over to badnorthamerica.com, use the promo code SECONDSTORY at checkout to get 10% off their first order. Again, head on over to Bad North America, go treat yourself to some new gear. So you mentioned you filmed your family life a lot. How is your family, like your your wife and your children, how do they feel about 
you know, being the fact that you're online, but obviously they're online too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I try to be cognizant of that. I, I am aware and not trying to turn my channel into a family channel because that is not the life that I want to live down in the future. So I'm aware. Um, I, I share snippets of my family because it, it's who I am. But like Carrie, for example, just not the biggest social media fan. I told her, you know, if she wanted to, she could probably start a cooking channel and be doing this full time in a year because people she people like her more than they like me i mean because she's an awesome person but she has doesn't have the desire you know to be on on video and stuff like that um so you know the girls like it um i try to i try to be very protective of them you know i stop using their names and i'll you know i want to protect my family um but I also am aware, like when we go out to family dinners, there are stuff that you, you don't see online. And I am aware over time, we can go out to a dinner now and I can get all the shots that I need. We go out for an hour and a half. I'll take four minutes to film and then an hour and 22 minutes engaging with my family. So it's something that I've learned over time. So they're not like, dad, <laughs> they're not, they're not, they're not like, Put your phone away, Dad. Anything like that? No, exactly like it. So I, I know which shots I need. I'm going to take three seconds. I'm going to grab the shot. I'm going to put it down. And it's, uh, you know, we just went to Disney. Um, and over the course of the day, I ended the day with 12 minutes of footage. So at a 15-hour 15 15-hour <laughs> Disney day, I spent 12 minutes of it filming footage. That's, yeah, that's pretty solid. There's. It seems that... So if you go back and you watch your, your earlier videos, so kind of the start of your channel... It wasn't, it, it was almost like you were trying, you were a lot more experimentation trying to find what you wanted it to be. And if you look at the last year of the videos, it's very solid. Like, it, I don't want to call it formulaic, but you've definitely developed a style and something that's yours. And you're like, this is how I do it. And I, I did wonder, like, how do you find the time to do it? But you've obviously found a way to whittle it down to use the least amount of time possible. Absolutely. So again, when I first started filming the vertical videos, it very much was, I need to get something out. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that was just, you know, film, see what works. Um, and over time, my videos started taking off. I need to get my dates right. Um, we just had 2023, 2022, 2021, I feel like is when they started taking off. January 2021 is when the video started taking off. And that's where I was like, okay, I need to double down on vertical video, I started producing, I was two or three a week. I was like, okay, I'm going to do four a week. And through that process of about three or four months, I did come up with my formula. Um, and by getting in the sheer number of reps, because I edited everything myself, I used to spend for an entire day, here's everything I eat in a day, I would have 40 minutes of footage that I'd have to cut down to under a minute. And it was like, oh my God, there's so much footage. But after I did it enough, it was like, okay, these I don't need this shot. I don't need this shot. So now I'll end the day with five minutes of footage total um, that will get turned into a minute. I, I'm really interested in that sustainable piece again, but like just around patience, you seem to be very, very patient with your journey. Actually, one of your quotes uh, around your success, you said um, uh, you gave yourself uh, more than a year to reach your goal. Mm -hmm. And that was very important to you uh, as far as your weight loss journey goes. I just wanted to throw out this quote by one of my favorite influencers named uh, Alex Hormozzi. Um, He says, uh, patience isn't about feeling comfortable while you wait. It's about choosing to wait despite feeling uncomfortable. I love that. And I, so I love Alex Hormozzi. I've probably kind of like with everybody, I got turned on him in what the last year, essentially in his rise. I love his stuff. I was implementing some of the things that he talked about before he started talking about him, which is why when he was like vocalizing, was, he was able to put into words some of the things that I felt like I was feeling. So I, I love Alex Hormos. I got his $100 million leads back here on the bookshelf. Um, <laughs> as far as like how I'm able to do it, uh, you know, some of it absolutely does come another Alex Hormozzi quote. You don't get confidence by shouting affirmations in the mirror, but by having an undeniable stack of evidence, I have been all or nothing so many times in my life. And when I was at my breaking point, I was 275 pounds. I was suicidal. Like I, I was not in a good place. And it's like, I knew that if I was really going to change my life, that I couldn't do what I'd done before 
because everything that I'd done before got me to a place where I didn't want to be. So I knew I had to take a slower, more methodical approach. And I'm always thinking about, you know, I do have a long-term approach now with everything, with YouTube, with my business, with my weight loss. Like, is what I'm doing now going to land me to where I want to be in five years? If yes, then keep going. The same is true if I have a cheat meal. If I go and have pizza and burgers and fries, if I eat 10,000 calories in a day, if I eat 10,000 calories in a day, is that going to determine where I'm at five years from now? No, it's not. So I can eat it guilt-free and just have it be one day instead of having it be into a month long, you failed yesterday. What's the point of even trying today? Yeah, I love that. We're pretty big Hormozy fans too. So uh, yeah, it's kind of, I always felt the same thing when I started seeing his stuff that was like, oh, I've always felt that way and I could never put it into words, which is weird because I write books, but he he's probably better at it than I am, I guess. Um, you know, you talked about five years down the road, like where you're going to be and stuff like that. And I'm going to go back to the investment thing. People are always willing to invest or not always, but some people are willing to invest money and see the payoff far down the line. And this is something Marmosi talks about, too, with building a business. Why do you think it is that certain people like yourself are able to to sort of delay the gratification and wait like and say the payoff I know is coming way down the road, but other people are like, I need this payoff right now. And this applies to dieting too. A lot of people will comment on your videos that like, you know, he's not seeing gains fast enough. And it's like, well, he's telling you in the video that he's looking for the long-term sustainable approach, but people are like, he hasn't gained anything this week. And it's, it's kind of weird. People are just a, you know, I need it now type of society. So why do you think why do you think there is a difference between people? So, you know, I think some of it is practice, right? Like the more you do things, you, you build you build a patient's muscle, right? Like it's not something that's given to you. You develop patience through being patient. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I think about. And because I was at such a low, I knew I had to try something different. And I hadn't always been a patient person. I was always an all or nothing, two feet in, two feet out. I'm gonna be crazy obsessed but then I'm going to completely forget about it. So I knew what I was doing wasn't working. So I, what I tell people, I'm, I'm still an all or nothing person. It's the way that I'm wired. But what I challenge people for on the weight loss side of things, if you're an all or nothing person, good, great, because we're going to use that. And I want you to go all or nothing. I want you to go all in on being sustainable as possible. If it's not sustainable, then it doesn't work. I'm not saying don't do anything. Maybe we tone it down a little bit. So go all in on sustainability. So just taking you back in your journey a little bit, you mentioned that like, you know, being, I think you said 275 pounds, you were, you know, basically depressed, having a hard time with work and things like that. Was there one single moment where that was sort of like a, um, you know, a ta-da moment or whatever you want to call it, where you're just like, I'm changing. That's it. Like one single moment where that happened. So there were two things. Um, one, um, I remember I was close. I was close to ending my life, and I told Carrie, like, it was not far off. And and I shared that with Carrie, and I remember um, just how um, not sympathetic, how caring she was for me. Um, concerned for me. And she's like, let's, let's make a change. So she got me some help that I needed. Um, and then that's what kind of set me on the path of leaving that job, building what I'm doing now. I remember that moment vividly. And then on the health and wellness side of things, it was around, again, similar time. I remember looking in the mirror, I can close my eyes and visualize it right now, our, our mirror in our bedroom. And it was like, I'm unrecognizable to who I was. I was in the army. I was in the infantry, ranger qualified. Like I was fit. I was, be, I was unrecognizable. I was like, I need to, I need to make a change and I need to do something different. And that's a hundred percent kind of that moment in time is where things shifted. Wow. Well, I'm glad they did for you. That's amazing. It's interesting because uh, Josh and I have talked about this many times, but um, and I've talked about it on this pod openly too. Just uh, v- very similar to you, I was in a job that was just soul crushing. It 
paid the bills. It was a nice high paid job and all that kind of stuff, but I was never, ever happy in that. And I got to a very depressed point in my life too, where I was coming home. I wouldn't talk to my family. I didn't want anything to do with anybody. And, um, I had one of those moments too, where it was like, uh, where instead of saying, I want these things for myself down the road, I'm going to do these things. Did mm. do you remember having like this? I guess the mirror would have been yours, right? Yeah, that. Um, and I think one of the things that I'm still learning now and have gotten better at is this idea of not delaying happiness either until like letting go of the goal, learning to enjoy the process. That's one of the things that James Clear talks about in Atomic Habits. Like if you if your happiness is dependent on reaching your goal, you're always going to be dissatisfied because reaching your goal usually only takes one moment in time. <laughs> and the 95% of the time that it takes to get there, if you're not happy, you're not going to keep it up. So like I've been thinking about, I am content with where I am day in and day out, still moving the ball forward a little bit, but by enjoying what I'm doing now, that means I'm going to keep moving the ball forward. Did you find uh, when you started sort of uh, moving towards your goal that you your eyes were open to, I call them sort of serendipitous moments where it's like, you know, someone calls you out of the blue and says, hey, man, I got this for you. Or like where you normally would have said no to that, suddenly you start saying yes to those things. Did you have any of those? Oh, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that, is where I'm at right now and where I'm going to be in the future is an absolutely serendipitous moment is I took a course on YouTube um, on how to grow on YouTube, just like a lot of online courses. Um, you know, there's a lot of them out there. I took this one because I knew I wanted to, to grow it. And I knew because I was working a nine to five, had a family, I didn't have a lot of time to learn. So I was like, I'm going to take a course and they're going to like condense. These are the steps. And in that course, I was there with another uh, guy. His name's Doug Clark. And we took the course together. He had a completely different channel about baseball. And about when I hit 100,000 subscribers, I was still not doing it full time. I was making a little bit more money on YouTube. Um, and I knew at that point that I wanted to build a business, but I didn't know what that business was. And he called me and he said, hey, I think you should look at doing online coaching. He's like, I think you'd be a good fit for it. It's it's within what you do. Um, he was an online coach and he, he'd sent me a podcast he was on. He had done like $10,000 in a month. And I was like, hmm. I was like, I could do this full time. So he looked at, so if him and I had not talked, that's what set me into online coaching. And that's what has changed the trajectory of uh of my life as far as like business and being able to do this full time. And if we had not kind of connected in that YouTube course and he hadn't reached out and we had that online connection there, I don't, I don't think I'd be here right now, or at least I still would be on YouTube. I knew the trajectory was I could make a full time living off of YouTube, but it was still a few years down the road, whereas online coaching just sped up the ability for me to pursue this full time. That's awesome. Do you find, so something else that Alex Ramosi talks a lot about too, is uh you know he'll talk about networking but he'll also talk about like going deep outside of your comfort zone and that's something that Corey and i've had to do like even within the realm of this podcast but just in our day-to-day -day, like going further outside to network with people and things like that that's sort of outside what we would typically do um how far what would you say was the farthest you had to go outside of your own comfort zone to make this thing happen for you the thing that where i took the most time and it was a gamble was investing all of my time outside of work into building it. I am, I'm a risk taker. Uh, Carrie is risk averse, but we are a team and we are a unit. Um, so the risk in our family, I want to balance, right? So I never took very large financial risks um, outside of like, I left the job went to Publix. That was a financial risk. That was hard on our family. I got my cut, my pay cut by 80%, but that was in pursuit of, I need to make less now so that I can make more with this company in the future. Okay. But the risk that I took with YouTube was investing a lot of time when I wasn't working, growing this, because if it didn't pay off, my kids would look back and say, when you weren't working, you were doing this YouTube thing that never took off. Does that make sense? That's kind of 
that 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 was my risk and that's the other reason why i like youtube is it's only an investment in time so we weren't ever going to lose the house yeah i mean that is that's a very big gamble and certainly would be outside of the comfort zone of almost everybody that i know that's something that i think a lot of people don't really factor into the equation is that when you're in a job like you had like Corey had like i have where you make a steady paycheck it's good you may you have a very good life there is a real comfort zone that you get stuck in where you're just kind of trapped in this zone of like everything's good enough it's like or it's like it's okay enough that you know i make enough money i can still eat i can still keep a roof over my head that's fine but there's like a desire that you kind of crush every day that you go into that job. And I, I've at least found that, you know, working in corporate gigs, it's like you just sort of every day, you just snuff out that flame a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then eventually you end up in a place, you know, like Corey mentioned, like you mentioned, where you're just deeply unhappy. But people think that that's comfortable. And it's it's kind of weird. It's I, I wonder if in the future that's a mindset that's going to change in people as they see more stories like your own. Yeah. And I think there, you know, there are some people that are happy with that. And that's, I think you need to pursue what's important to you. But there, again, I I knew part of it's because I was in the army and part of it's just the way that I'm built. I, I want to have a big impact and making a lot of money in a corporate job. That's not a big impact. Now I'm not against making money. I, I would love to, to make a lot of money. But doing something impactful, I feel like, or impactful to me, helping people yeah. get healthy. Yeah, that's, a, I mean, that's very impactful. Um, talking a bit about the, the weight loss, um, you had said, fasting gives me freedom from food. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, so that, that kind of goes back a little bit to that all or nothing mindset. I was very much a person who associated guilt with food that's a bad food you shouldn't eat that and so then if i ate something that was quote unquote bad i um i would go on like a month long where i wouldn't eat anything good it's like you've messed up a little bit you know if you've ate three oreos you might as well eat all the oreos but what i feel like <laughs> fasting has done is for me personally it gives me it works because it reduces calories, right? There's no magic to it. But for me, it is the tool that works best because I am busy. I prioritize my family. It's important to me that we don't cook different meals. So like mom and the girls are eating this and dad's got to eat this thing that's different. Like, no, by simplifying it, I can enjoy food um, and kind of move on. I, I lost a lot of weight after my first deployment, lost 34 pounds in 90 days, didn't have a single cheat meal. And I remember the meal right now. I had a, a bite of a, I went out and went for hot wings after running a half marathon. And I was like, why did you eat the hot wings? You've just done all this work. You've messed up all your progress. And I went on a six month binge where I gained 50 pounds. I lost 34, had a single meal that was completely insignificant to what I was doing. But mentally I had demonized that food because I hadn't eaten it for 90 days and then went on a six month binge. It's the all or nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you, so talking a little bit, there's a few different directions we could go, but one of the things you talked about in one of your videos was, uh, sort of knowing what not to have. And this goes back to, you know, going to a, you know, fast food joint or something like that. There was a video you did recently where you went to Chick-fil-A and you got chicken nuggets and you're like, I don't need the sauce. These are great. You know, these are good enough. Why would I add all these other, you know, fats and calories and things like that onto it? Do you think that comes from like learning to fast or is that something you developed kind of outside of that? No. So I think fasting, the, the thing that I have really learned with intermittent fasting is how much eating I did that was habitual, not because I was hungry, just because it was out of habit, right? Now, because I don't eat until two o'clock in the afternoon, well, I can think back in the past, there were a ton of times that I was eating, not because I was hungry, a habit. Road trips is a great example. I have not eaten on a road trip since I've been intermittent fasting because I'm usually never hungry. But before, even if I was traveling three hours, which is not a long time, I would that road trip would start with a trip to the gas station and a bag of Doritos. And it's like, I wasn't hungry. I was just eating out of habit. So fasting has allowed me to 
better tune into my hunger signals. So I'm not eating when I'm not hungry. Just like having that sauce, that wasn't going to fill me up anymore. Therefore, I didn't need to, I, I used to be a habitual, drench my stuff in sauce. So it tastes the absolute pinnacle of best. But those chicken nuggets without the sauce are still 85% awesome. It's still better than grilled chicken, right? So fried yeah. chicken is amazing. I don't need to make it 10% better and double the calories. I can ha I'm can. i okay with it being 85% good and saving 600 calories in sauce, which is probably not an under, under exaggeration. A 30 count nugget, I would have easily eaten six sauces. Five, yeah. five nuggets <laughs> per sauce. I had it dialed in. <laughs> yeah. Chick-fil-A sauce is pretty deadly too. It's pretty, it's pretty good. But yeah, like you say, the nuggets themselves are pretty good. Um, that was actually a lesson I learned from your videos was that like if, you know, I eat a lot of stuff that's really good and is good for me, but you sort of douse it in these other things. And I've learned to, to not do that and just enjoy, enjoy sort of the good parts of it and, you know, not fill myself up with junk. So appreciate it. You taught me that lesson. I love it. Um, yeah. One other thing I, I noticed in your videos, there was a point where you said you're not the biggest fan of cooking, which is kind of funny for video, like somebody who makes this is what I ate today videos. And you're like, I actually don't really care much for cooking, um, but you've made adjustments there, too, with your life. And you, you've sort of found meals that work for you that don't necessarily require like a ton of prep, a ton of cleanup. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So it does come down to I am very wise. I don't know that I'm wise. I, I watch my time. I'm huge on time. I'm very, I'm punctual. I'm always like, I, I love my calendar. And when it comes down to it, I eat fast. Maybe that's something I got from ranger school. I eat fast. So for me, it just doesn't make sense. Why would I spend 40 minutes prepping, cooking, measuring, eat it in 10 minutes and then spend another 30 minutes cleaning up? It's like, man, I just literally took an hour out of my day. I'm sleeping for eight of them. I took so much time to cook and clean up. Like if, if I can't cook it in 10 minutes and clean up easy, it's, it's just not worth it. That's why I don't like cooking. Carrie loves cooking. So because for her, she enjoys the process of cooking. So she can cook for an hour. And for her, that is not time wasted because it's time spent enjoying. For me, there's a thousand other things I want to do with my limited time and cooking is not one of them. Yeah. So that's a that's actually another thing you taught me was about whipping up stuff that's actually good for you in very short order. Um, so you do like poke bowls and stuff like that, but also like just you know Greek yogurt, fruit, which I literally just had. Oh, before I, I had that for dessert I, like, last night. Gonna... <laughs> I had it for yeah, dessert last go. night. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's been. I mean, it's been helpful for me because I you know work and do all these other things and don't sometimes you just don't have you know a half hour or an hour to whip something up, but you still want to eat relatively healthy. So definitely very informative there. I definitely agree with the the premise around intermittent fasting because I've I've done I've done different fad things like uh, P ninety X and that sort of thing, and it's really like killing yourself for you know, a payoff in 30 days. And then like, it really wasn't sustainable, but intermittent fasting, um, I, I'm not currently doing it, but I have in the past. And, and when I did it, I, I noticed like, not only is it sustainable, um, but I found like I was getting energy in the middle of the day that, that I normally would have crashed out on. Do you find that as well? Oh, hundred percent. I was just going to comment. Like, that's me right now. Like I'm I'm wired, ready to go. I get all my work done in the mornings. Like, I feel great right now. Let me take a look at my fasting timer. Um, I started fasting last night at 7-Eleven. I'm 16 and a half hours faster right now. I feel great. Like, I'm not even thinking about food. Ton of energy. This is, like, prime time for me. If I were to have something right now, now I want to go take a nap and I'm digesting. So, no, I, I absolutely feel that, which leads back into the sustainability. The reason I continue to fast is because I just like the way that I feel when I'm fasted. And because of that, I can do it day in and day out. Yeah. And for me, too, the other advantage to it that I found was that I'm a late night snacker. I'm like, it's just a snacker in general. So late night, I was like, you know, I'd be up till 11 or something or midnight. And I'd be like, yeah, I think I'll just wander into the pantry and see what I can find. <laughs> um, when you have that window where maybe you stop at six o'clock and you're not eating past that or whatever your your schedule may be, I found that that part of it cut out for me. And right there, 
you're going to get weight loss. You have to get weight loss from not snacking at midnight. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'm a late night snacker as well. And I think people that I work with, I tell them the same thing. Like again, intermittent fasting isn't magic, but if you have your last meal at seven o'clock and that's half your day's calories, if you're eating a 1200 calorie meal, that's a lot of food. You're not even thinking about snacking an hour or two later. You're like, I'm still, I'm still digesting dinner. Right. Yeah. I don't do the intermittent fasting, but I have done it in the past and it's worked for me. One of the things in your videos that you talk about is like, it's important for you to find something that works for you. And you're obviously speaking to your audience there and you're saying, this is what works for me. So you're not really giving them like necessarily dietary advice. You're giving them more like life advice, like go in search of the thing that's going to work for you. How important is it for you to sort of separate those two things? Like this is what works for me, but it won't necessarily work for you, but you got to go in a search for what'll help you. I love that. And I think I can maybe do a better job of explaining that because that is what I believe. Like intermittent fasting is not necessarily the answer. Now it may be the answer for you. And most of the people that I work with are similar to where I was. If you're a busy dad and a busy mom, and like, you don't have a lot of time, intermittent fasting is a good tool because unlike other tools, it's going to save you time, right? I'm going to cut out 20 minutes of you prepping your breakfast and like give you that time back. You're not going to have to search. Is this on the diet plan? Like, so it is a tool, but when it comes to people finding what's important for them, that is ve- that's the key to sustainability. When you look at an Instagram influencer and they're showing you, here's everything I ate today, and I woke up and I had avocado toast and a fried egg, and, or they probably didn't fry it, a poached egg, and they walk you through like, man, just a perfect day of eating. And they are lean year round and look incredible. The thing that they don't tell you and no fault to them, it's just, this is a reality. The reason that they eat like that and look like that year round is because they love it. The, the, for them, it works perfectly. That's why they're able to sustain it. It's so important that people find what works for you that you can sustain. Now that's not a pass to do whatever you want. You find something that gets you a little better, but if you find that marginal improvement and sustainability, that's where it pays off in the end. For some people, they like like meal prepping, right? Like I, I watched the meal prep King on Instagram. I love his stuff. I love to watch it, but I know that's not me. I'm not going to spend eight hours on Sunday cooking because I don't like reheated food. The temperature of food and like freshness of food is important to me. I don't like reheated food. Meal prep's not necessarily going to work for me. Yeah, that wouldn't, (laughs) yeah, that definitely wouldn't be great for you if you don't. Do you find, so just kind of pivoting over to your social media stuff, one of the things that always really impresses me about, you know, moms and dads that, you know, have a job, have kids, have a household to run, and then also do a side hustle. I'm always impressed by that. And when people turn it into a full-time thing, it's even more impressive because it is super rare. Um, Did you find when you were doing all of that, plus your social media, that you had that sort of all or nothing? Like if you missed a video on a certain day, so let's just say you were doing four a week and you missed one, did you have that mentality slip in where you're like, oh, I might as well stop because I missed this? I don't, I don't feel like I had that moment only because by the time that, um, by the time I would have felt that, I had already lost my weight. And again, my weight loss stuff has permeated to my social media. So I knew at that point that that was a false belief, if that makes sense. I now know yeah. that slipping doesn't equate, like if I post a bad video or if I don't post, it's not going to stop the growth of my channel. I, I have let go of that fear, if that makes sense. That's interesting. Have you felt like you've posted a video that you're like, Ugh, I kind of missed the mark on that one? A few, um, but I think one of the things that I do now, because over time I have just gotten better when I talk about the formula and stuff, I I do recognize that people want to see what they want to see. And if I enjoy making the videos, I should make what people want to see. People want to see the what I eat in a day videos. So that is now 80% of my content um, and it continues to perform well. It's it. So here's a thought that I had like a month or two ago is like, do I get off of this? What I eat in a day video, but then I have to take a step back and like, is it working? Yes, it's working. Then, (laughs) then why change it? Um, uh, I'm having my best month ever on YouTube, but also to kind of hedge against that on the content side of things, 80% of my content is what people subscribe for. 
And then that other 20%, I will experiment. I'll do a, here's everything I did in a day. Here's a workout. My workout videos do terrible because as much as people say, show us your workouts, it doesn't come through in the views. People don't really want to see it or enough, you know, people don't watch it. So I don't think they really want to see it. So I don't make as much workout videos and it's hard for me to film and actually get a good workout in. But like the grocery haul videos, that was in my experiments. I allotted for, I'm going to experiment with grocery hauls, see how they do. They have been doing well. So now they're going to become part of my 80%. So now what I eat in grocery hauls is part of my 80%. Now I need, I still try to experiment with my content to see if something resonates. That's, you're kind of following like an old Hollywood rule there. Your math is a little bit different, but if you if you know about movies, they used to have this rule for actors and actresses that you do two for them and one for you. Mm. So you would do, you know, someone like Tom Cruise would do Mission Impossible and then he'd do like a Top Gun and then he would make Magnolia. And that's obviously one <laughs> one that's for him because it's not going to hit at the box office. So, yeah, you're kind of following that rule. Obviously, it's 80-20, but it's uh, probably a good rule to follow. I'm a fan of those videos. Keep making them. I like your grocery haul videos, too. But... Yeah. And a lot. Uh, yeah. A lot of people like those. So those I got, I got more of those coming. That's good. I'll be watching. Um, one thing with so you mentioned the workout videos. I saw you post, I, I've seen this a few times, and I, I always find it interesting the way people deal with, we'll just, we'll call them haters, you can call them <laughs> trolls, whatever you want, but I've seen people post like on, you know, Instagram, YouTube, they're like, this guy never even shows himself working out, and then you showed yourself squatting, I don't know how much weight you were squatting, but it looked like an awful lot, and you're like, all right, here you go, and it's funny to hear you say like, people don't watch them, but you're making it for the people who kind of maybe don't like your stuff, and it's, yeah, it makes sense that it, I guess it wouldn't get as many views. Yeah, no, and uh, so the hater videos, that is one that I know my audience doesn't necessarily like um, in that I have, I, I love my community. I love it. I'm, I'm blessed beyond measure. I love the positivity. Um, my comment section is 90% positive, and I am no longer at the place where I can reply to every comment. I'm now getting to the place where I don't even see every comment just because there's so many. But up to about 30,000 subscribers, I think I replied to every single comment. I try. It's very important to me. I spend an hour a day in comments replying because I know on the other side of that comment is a person. I, I have not forgotten that. It's important for me. So when I take the time to do a clapback video, I do those for me. I enjoy them. Uh, <laughs> they're a, a decent percentage of my audience is like, why do you even take the time? And I also know Alex Hormozzi talks about like, you know, don't do things for your haters. You should even forget them. So I know that is maybe not the best, but I'm not perfect, right? Maybe it would be better if I paid them no attention, but I can't help it. I'm hum I enjoy making those clapback videos. They're fun for me, right? So that's, that's why I make those. That's a video for me. If, if you see me reply to a negative comment, I know I should rise above it, but sometimes I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Another... Uh... Another influencer that Josh and I follow, he's a writer, uh, a sc screenwriter. His name is Michael Jammin. And uh, during the writer's strike that they were having, that's pretty much, that was all he did was, <laughs> was like these clapback videos. And and he kept saying on, he would say right on his videos, he's like, I'm doing this to, to get viewers. Like I'm, I'm doing this, like you guys giving this negative comments. Actually, I'm just getting a lot of viewership from it. So keep it up. <laughs> no, a hundred percent. Yeah, he probably enjoyed it too. Um, you you have a thick skin for for those types of people. Like you you seem to your response is always very like well thought out and and very you know accurate. Um, do you think you get a thick skin just from military experience? No, a hundred percent. Like being in the army and in the infantry, like man, we rib each other, and some of them cut deep because you spend a lot of time with the guys. They know where you're really self-conscious and they won't throw a punch. Um, so you absolutely develop a thick skin. And I think one of the other things when I hear negativity, I really do. And Hormozy talks about, it and a lot of people talk about, it, I really do have empathy for them because nobody ever takes the time to, uh, to harass somebody that's doing that they're doing better than. So it's like, if somebody posts something like that, it's like, man, I, like, I really I have some pity on you. Yeah. I've heard a lot of, a lot of social media influencers talk about that particular thing, that that's the red line for them. And I totally get it, it would be my red line as well. 
There's this this question that I saw. I don't know when I saw it, but it was a while ago, and it's always sort of rattled around in my brain is who do you want to have designs for your own life? Do you want your life designed by you or do you want the company that you work for to design your life? And you've answered that question. Corey's answered that question. I'm trying to answer that question for myself. Uh, there are a lot of people that feel that way that just don't know where to begin. Like for whatever, they may not want to make a YouTube channel, but they may have aspirations of like, I want to be a carpenter or I want to be a you know interior designer. What would you say is a good starting point for people to, who want to get out of the workforce and work for themselves? Two things um, that I would tell people. One, have a, a general idea of what you want to do. Understand that life is going to happen. Like I, I didn't know that I would be an online coach. I've been doing it now since September last year. So just coming up a little over a year, I now am pretty confident that I'm going to build a very successful business around this. I didn't know it 18 months ago, but I knew three years ago, starting my YouTube channel, I wanted to do something in the health and wellness space. So I had an idea. So have an idea of what you want to do and then just find what actions, any actions you can take to move you towards that goal, because action's going to get you there over daydreaming about it. That's if I had a superpower, that's one of the things that I have been able to do is I'm just going to take messy action. I'm definitely a fire first, aim later kind of guy. So my recommendation would be if it's anything moving you towards that end, it's going to get you there. If you're not taking action to get you there, you're never going to get there. Does it, so find out what you want to do. And then through YouTube, through resources, just find out what, what's something tangible. Maybe it's learning something. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's getting a, a job in the field or working for free for the field. The, the how could take a thousand different things, but do something. And when I say learn, if you're going to learn, you should take action from that learning. Also, like just take some sort of small action. Yeah, that makes sense. I think something people are, are sort of ingrained to believe is that, you know, if you want to go on your own path, you got to take these, these big swings, like these huge drastic changes, but baby steps. I mean, just small things to me, like if you do want to go on a certain path, there are small steps you can take, little barriers that you can sort of overcome to to gain entry to those types of things. But we are a, you know, to throw back to something you said, we're an all or nothing society. Like, nope, you know, if I want to write, I got to immediately write a book, which is actually what my mindset was when I started to get into writing. I'm like, no, I got to write a book. And it took me 12 years to write a book. Mm -hmm. I probably could have written articles first and probably gained a lot more traction out of that. But we're we're an all or nothing society. And it always looks like when you're looking out, looking way into the future and going, this is where I want to end up. It There's so many steps to getting there. So I think what you're saying, Ryan, is like, take that first step, whatever it is, and it may be the easiest step, but at least take it. And that's going to be the start to all the steps that it takes to get to where you want to be. A hundred percent. Like there was, I, I, I have gotten rid of this saying, so it's up for grabs. If anyone wants to get it in the future, I was kind of, I've latched onto progress over perfection, but when I started, I liked the idea of action over perfection, right? Like do any, do anything and it's better than, than doing nothing. Like, and that goes for weight loss as well, right? Like find one thing you could do, man. If, if you have 12 sodas a week, reduce it to 11, that's action. Is it perfect? No, perfect would be get rid of 12 sodas a week. But if you can go from 12 to 11, that's something. And just keep doing that yeah. something and then take it to 10. Yeah, keep taking. I mean, I, I think I talked about it on this podcast. Maybe, I'm, maybe I didn't. But um, two years ago, so the big change in my life health-wise was two years ago, I was in the hospital for over five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't walk. Um, we didn't know what was wrong. It took a long time to figure it out. But eventually we figured out I had some problems with my hips. I'm still waiting on a couple of hip surgeries. But when I got out of the hospital, I was like, I want to get, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change my health. I'm going to get into shape. And my goal was to get into the point where I could like, you know, lift heavy things and run far. I still can't run far, but I can lift heavy things. But the first step I took was I'm going to walk to the stop sign on the corner of my street. 
And then I'm going to walk a little farther, a little farther, a little farther. And that was eventually what got me back into the gym and lifting weights and stuff like that. But if I just had the mindset that I'm going to go to the gym today, straight out of the hospital, just start lifting weights, I would have been in some real trouble. And I think people do that. No, absolutely. Right. We want to change our life the way it's not going to happen by doing it tomorrow. It's going to happen by committing to I'm going to change my life three years from now by doing something small today. I think it's uh, I think it's also important too to know that like if if you're on a journey towards success that there's there's not really an end to that <laughs> you know you might you might reach kind of milestones along the way but then it's like okay what's the next what's what's kind of my next moves my next steps and um, I think some people kind of stop at a certain point they're like well I got to my weight gain or my weight loss goal I got to my muscle gain goal or whatever it may be. Um, I got to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, right? There's always going to be something more. So it's just a matter of like, keep pressing, right? But enjoy it along the way. Enjoy it along the way. Where, for, for you in, in that vein, where do you want to take your thing? You've mentioned a few times getting into the online coaching, but where ultimately do you want to build your business out to? I have really just kind of got some clarity on this in the last few months. I have an idea now of kind of what I'm shaping. And the thing that I would like to shape um, is kind of centered around, are you all familiar with Dave Ramsey at all? Yep. So big in the financial space. Essentially what Dave Ramsey says, he helps people get out of debt and develop financial literacy for a household, right? Not to be a mill. He says you'll be a millionaire when you're 60, but just day in and day out, live within your means. But one of the things Dave Ramsey says is finances, it's not math. If it was math, people wouldn't be in debt, right? It's 80% behavior and 20% math. I feel that way around weight loss. Weight loss is not 80% nutrition, 20% exercise, or 70-30. Weight loss is 80% habits and behaviors. 20% 20% nutrition and fitness. So what I'm trying to build, I'm, I, th- I think I want to build something similar to what Dave Ramsey has built. He's got multiple ways to help people with their finances. I want to build multiple ways to help people achieve their weight loss goals. Now, maybe for some people that's a book um, and they're just able to read and they're able to go and do on their own. They need no other assistance. Dave Ramsey has a book and Carrie and I read that book and that's all we ever did. All we needed was the book. But then he had classes to where you could go. He did them at churches. If you need a little more help, maybe you take a course. Maybe I have a course that's like, if the book isn't enough, you got a course. Or you can hire a financial accountability coach and work with them one-on-one within his system. And they'll work with you to help you get your finances. That's what I'm doing currently. I only work with people one-on-one. But in the future, I just see multiple avenues to help people. Maybe there's an, an app that you can use that is, you know, that helps you manage your fast and all that kind of stuff. That's helps the masses. Dave Ramsey has an app. I have it on my phone where I manage my finances. So just different avenues all to the same end of helping people lose weight and keep it off, but just different vehicles by which to help people. So that's kind of what I'm shaping now. The, the modern entrepreneur is really not looking at one, you know, this is my path. They're looking at like multiple, not just revenue streams, but like multiple things that keep them engaged and interested. A- action over everything. Take a small step. You can absolutely change your life, but you're not going to change your life starting this Monday. It's not going to happen. And if it does, it's going to happen for a week or two, then you're going to burn out. If you want to change one thing in your life, man, if you could just change three things this year, that's not too much. But if you change them to the point that you keep them up for the rest of your life, well, then next year, add another three things. That's the compound. If people are tuning into this podcast, this particular one with you on it, what are they going to take from it? Um, I think the thing that they should take from it is that you don't need to make a big change, but you do need to make a change. I think that's one of the things when I tell people, I get them on a call and they ask me why I make the videos. One, for accountability, but two, I have a goal in a few years. I may have said this already on the podcast. I want to be in better shape 
in my 40s than I was in my 20s, and I'm going to have seven years of videos showing there was never any magic that happened, right? Like, that's the thing to take away. I did say it on the spot. I say it all the time, right? Like, there was never magic that happened, but I always did something. So just do something in the right direction. There's the magic you're looking for. This is a Chris Williamson. The magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding, right? Just do a little something, and you're going to get there. It's It's never going to happen like that. And, but it's never going to happen if you don't do anything. Yeah, love that quote. Chris Williamson's another favorite of ours. Um, before we get out of here, Ryan, is there anything that you want to plug? Where can people find you? YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I think Instagram and TikTok, I'm still uh, at IF with Ryan, intermittent fasting with Ryan, not I with Ryan. It's intermittent fasting with Ryan uh, on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and then YouTube, uh, just Ryan Johnson. And then uh, if you ever have any questions, please feel free, reach out. Uh, my email is ifwithryan at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to reach out there. Honestly, it was an honor to have you on our show. It was, it was a lot of fun too. Really appreciate you doing it. We should note too, uh, for anyone that wants to listen to this podcast or any of our other podcasts, we're on every podcast network, Apple, Spotify, all of those. If you want to watch the visual version of this podcast, you can go over and watch that on YouTube or Rumble. Thanks for checking us out at Second Story.